Hey folks, it's Mangrel. Welcome back to the channel. And I'm on a mission to make this DJI O3 air unit as light as possible. We're gonna go ahead and remove the case of this O3 air unit. So we create a naked O3. And I did something very similar a few years back with the Vista. So I got a little bit of experience doing this. So before we start, let's do a quick before weight check. So right now the O3 is 26 grams. Let's add the little cover here. So we're looking at a little bit over 26 grams for the O3 with the original case. For the modification, we'll be using the 3D files from Kudmulla. These are the naked DJI O3 air unit case files, and they've got files there for the stock screw size, which is M1.6, along with M2. So you're gonna go ahead and select which size you want, and then you'll download the bottom, the middle, and the top of whichever screw size you select. Just bear in mind, if you do go with the M2, you will have to drill out the boards of the O3. They say that this does not cause any issues. I actually did not try this. I stuck with the M1.6. Next, you wanna go ahead and import the files into your 3D printer slicing software. I use the Perusa slicer. And then I wanna rearrange these for optimal printing. So you can see these two, the way they import in will have us using support I don't want that. So I'm just going to go ahead and have it facing this way. This one, likewise, I want it to be facing this way. So this way, these two files, this is the bottom and this is the top, these do not require any supports. The only piece that requires a support is this, and I only do support on build plate only. And I will print this at 50% infill using Saint Smart Black TPU. So when you slice this, it should look something like that. I've gone ahead and taken the O3 apart. It was pretty simple to take apart, so I didn't capture it uh, step by step. There are videos on YouTube on how to do this, so I'll let you refer to those videos. But ultimately, remove the screws from the top of the O3, the bottom of the O3, and once you do that, it is three pieces. So you've got the middle piece, you've got this piece here, which is, I believe, the bottom, yep, the bottom, and then you got this piece here, which is the top. So just very simply, it pulls apart. The tough piece though is the cable that connects the two boards. So these two boards do connect together with a cable and that cable actually slots through here. So you can't just pull the thing apart. You have to disconnect that cable first. And that's where it gets a little tricky and you need quite a bit of patience because the connector, typically it's very easy. You just get your nail underneath there, you pop it off. But what DJI has done is they've glued the connector to the board. Sorry, not, not the connector. They've glued the ribbon cable to the board. So you have to break that glue first. So what I did was I took my tweezers and just slowly picked at it until it seemed to disconnect from the cable. And once you do that, you can just pop the cable off. Make sure that you get all the glue out. Otherwise, you will break that connector and then you will be SOL. Once you do that, the two boards come apart very simply. There's a little bit of... A heat transfer compad on there. You can use some alcohol. I used some 99% alcohol to get it all cleaned up. I've started the reassembly process. When we look at the 3D prints, this piece here, this is the top and it should sit like this. So I went ahead and I just started the original screws just until they got to the very edge. Then this piece here, this is the middle piece. This guy here, this is the middle piece. So you go ahead and you pass this cable through and it sits like this. So you should be able to screw this in. Now make sure that you do install your camera cable before you fully screw it in. Because once you screw it in, this TPU mount should hold the cable in. And then once you have done that, you get this piece here. You connect up the ribbon cable. And then finally, this piece is the very bottom. So you want to position this straight area over the antenna connectors. It should go like this. So that way this piece actually holds the antenna connectors in. And here's how it looks like. I haven't put all the screws back in yet because I need to connect the cables and I have to do the before and after weight comparison. In its original condition, this was 26 point something grams. Now let's see how much it weighs afterwards, 19.25. Okay, so I think we're looking at roughly seven grams of weight savings. I thought there would be more, but hey, every gram counts. This came out okay. I used the original screws at the very top and then the frame screws at the bottom. The only thing I would have done a little bit differently is this connector down here, the one that had the glue on there, 
I would have re-glued it before putting it all together. You can see it was very difficult to get the glue back in there afterwards. Now, if you're like me and you wanna get every single gram of weight savings, what you can do is remove these metal RF shields. If you remove those, you should get some more weight savings, but that's where you get into the territory of potentially damaging and making this thing completely useless. I started on the first board, so you can see this side here has a lot of goop inside. So you're gonna have to take your time to clean this all up. And on the other side, thankfully so far, no goop. And ultimately what you do is you go around the corner with either your nail or with a little tiny screwdriver and you just kind of pop the cover off. And you're gonna probably break your fingernail a little bit. You can see I've already messed up mine. But you're just gonna go around the corners and pop the head off, the, the cover off. Now depending on if you want to salvage this or you just want to get rid of it, it determines how much effort you put in. You can go ahead and just kind of peel it back like this if you don't want to save it. Once you have everything apart, the next challenge is to get all that goop, all that thermal paste out. And what I like to do is take a small screwdriver and just take off as much as I can. You have to be very careful so you don't get too far in there, you don't damage the components, but remove as much as you can with the screwdriver. And then once you've done that, you can take the excess off using alcohol and a toothbrush. So just go ahead and brush, brush, brush. This will probably take half an hour to an hour to get it all cleaned up. I wrestled with this for about half an hour and I think it came out fairly clean, not perfect. But what I found worked really well is to do the cleaning over a sink. Otherwise, that thermal goop gets thrown all over the place as you're brushing side to side. So you can see the two sides here, fairly clean. I made sure to also brush out any gunk that got into the connectors. The second piece here, again, didn't come out 100% clean, but it's good enough. You can see both sides. And what I decided to do is not to reinstall this SD card holder. On this air unit, I don't use the SD card slot, which would plug in over here. So I'll save a bit more weight and not reinstall that. The air unit does have onboard storage and that's good enough for me. And here's the final product. It looks fairly sketchy, but it seems to come together really well. Now, one thing that I think I'll have to do is remix this quad mullet design just to add a bit more support here. So you can see where that connector is. There is no support from this connector to the very top. I did apply glue to the corners, just like how DJI had, but compared to this side where you actually have this TPU connect or TPU mount actually go all the way from the top to the bottom just to support that connector. And that's because over here is where you would have the SD card slot, which I removed. And then the bottom of course looks like this. We know this was 26 grams as it came from DJI. When we did the last modification, it was about 19 grams. Let's see what this is now. So right now this is, wow, 13.7 grams. So that is roughly 13 gram savings by doing this modification. We're put back together now, and it looks like this actually fits together a lot better. I did try to remove these as well from the board. I tried to heat them up with a soldering iron to try to remove them, but I couldn't get them off. I didn't want to risk damaging anything, so I left them there. But this looks quite good. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and do a quick test flight within the workshop here, make sure that things are looking okay. Now, no surprise that when you remove the shielding in the case of the O3 air unit, it will overheat quicker. And that's because the shielding is used as a heat sink to help keep it cool. So I did some testing here indoors without any fans blowing air at the air unit. And we see that in the original unmodified state, we get the aircraft processor overheated message at 941 and it completely shuts down at 1108. With the first modification where we removed the actual case but we kept the RF shields, it overheats at 515 and completely shuts down at 555. And then finally, where we removed the case, we removed the RF shields, the lightest configuration, it overheats the quickest. So at 2.41, we get the overheat message, and at 3.36, it has completely shut down. 
A bench temperature test is a good comparison, but it's not a true representation of real life. As we're flying outdoors, we have airflow being generated by the flight itself, along with a lot of airflow coming off the props. So I've done four flights back to back in our Canadian spring weather. It is 14 degrees Celsius, so not too cold, not too hot and everything seems to be working okay. I also did a very slow cruise type style flight where I went uh, over eight minutes on this one flight just to make sure that there were no overheating uh, behavior and everything seemed to work okay. Our megabits are still running at 50. I never saw any weird behavior. And what you're watching here is the ultimate final state of our modification where we removed the case from the O3. We also removed all those RF shields. Everything seems to be working fine. And I'm almost at eight minutes and 30 seconds on the single flight. Everything is okay. Now on the last flight, you may have noticed that the storage full message was on there. And I'm sure some of you will say, that the air unit was not working at full kind of processing capabilities because of the onboard being full. So I did a similar flight where I went cruise style, but this time recording on the onboard as well. And you can see again, almost eight minutes, and I was able to finish that flight without any kind of overheating behavior. So make sure to like, subscribe, and comment, and stay tuned for more videos.